Thank you for stopping by HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about rational expressions, the definition of them, finding the domain of rational expressions, and simplifying some rational expressions. So first, the definition. A rational expression is an expression in which the numerator is a polynomial and the denominator is a polynomial, and specifically the denominator cannot equal zero. Some examples of rational expressions, so here x minus 2 over x plus 5, that would be polynomial over polynomial. 1 over c to the fifth minus 9c squared plus 12. That would be an example of polynomial over polynomial, therefore it's a rational expression. Lastly, we have this monstrosity here, but as you can tell, we do have a polynomial over a polynomial. So we have lots of examples of rational expressions, let's look at some that are not. This first example, we have the square root of 4 minus x over x to the fourth minus 7. The denominator is fine, but the numerator is not, and the numerator is not fine because this is not a polynomial. Polynomials don't have variables as radicands. In this example, it looks good, except right here we see we have x to the negative fourth. Polynomials, we, we only have positive integer exponents for our variables. So that's why that would not be a polynomial, and therefore this expression is not a rational expression. Here we have 3 over x plus 7 over 6x. This is a complex fraction. The numerator here, this would not be considered a polynomial. So therefore, this is not a rational expression. What does it mean for a rational expression to be simplified? Well, it means that the numerator and denominator have no common factors besides one. So it's similar to the idea of simplifying a numerical fraction, such as 4 over 6. So 4 over 6, we know it can be simplified because 4 and 6 are both divisible by 2. Now, when we're looking at rational expressions, what we're going to have to do, because it's not going to be as obvious to us as 4 and 6 having that common factor of 2, we're going to factor both the numerators. We're going to write 4 as 2 times 2, and we're going to factor the denominator. 6 is 2 times 3. Once they're in factored form, then we can cancel out the common factor, and then we can say that 6, 4 6 is equivalent to 2 thirds. As I said, this may require us to factor either or both the numerator and denominator. Factors are things that are multiplied to each other and there is nothing else that they are doing. So I can't emphasize this enough because very commonly we see something like x squared plus 4 over 2x squared plus 5 and somebody says, oh look, there's an x squared in both the numerator and denominator. That's so cool. So I can cross these out and then I'm left with, well, I don't even know because that's just, that's not right. We, we cannot do this. This is not a thing. I'm going to put that clearly so that if you're not listening, it's going to be written down anyway. Not a thing. Uh, because x squared is not a factor of the numerator. In order for it to be a factor, the only thing that should be happening to x squared is multiplication. And there's something else. There's addition happening. In the denominator, you might say, well, x squared is being multiplied. It's being multiplied by 2. That's true, but it's also being added to 5. So therefore, x squared is not a factor of the denominator. In this case, we actually can't simplify this. It would be already simplified. Okay. Something else that's important to talk about is the domain of rational functions. So the domain, uh, we run into problems because we have variables in the denominator. If the denominator could possibly equal zero, that would be a restriction on the domain. So we need to make sure when we're stating the domain, we identify all values for x, whoops, or x, that would create a zero in the denominator. And those get pulled out of our domain. So it does ask us to write our uh, domain in um, interval notation. We would extract those values out. So our first example, we have two over x. Basically what I just said. So we want to identify any value that would create a zero down here. So that means that x, what I do is I say the denominator cannot equal zero. And then x is already by itself, so we know we can plug in any real number we want in the entire world to this rational expression except for 0, because if we plug in 0, we don't get a real number output. So in interval notation, we can say this is from negative infinity to 0, and from 0 to infinity. For example b, we're going to take our denominator, x squared minus 25, and set it equal to or, or say it cannot equal zero. So it can be anything in the entire world, except it cannot equal zero. Uh, this is a difference of squares, so it's going to factor into root minus root times root plus root. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take each factor and say each factor cannot equal zero. So x minus 5 
cannot equal 0, therefore x cannot equal 5. x plus 5 cannot equal 0, therefore x cannot equal negative 5. So x can be anything it wants in the entire real number universe except for 5 and negative 5. When we write this in interval notation, we would say it's from negative infinity to negative 5, or from negative 5 to 5, or from 5 to infinity. So we're basically just, we're taking that, that set of all real numbers and we're just plucking out the cases that it can't be the restriction. So we pluck, pluck out negative 5 and we pluck out 5. Example C, we have x squared plus 4 cannot equal 0, because that denominator cannot equal 0. This almost looks like a difference of squares, but it is missing the difference part of it. This is addition. x squared plus 4 can't be factored, so therefore we have no restrictions on our variable. Uh, there's no way, humanly possible, that the denominator is going to equal 0. And if you think about it, x squared, the smallest that x squared can be is 0 itself, and 0 plus 4 is 4. So the very minimum the denominator can be is 4. Therefore, there's no restrictions on this rational expression. So we would say that the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. It's nice when it works out like that. In our last example, we're going to just take our denominator and we're going to say, okay, x squared plus 5x plus 6 cannot equal 0. We need to factor this trinomial. It's uh, Target product is 6, target sum is 5. That would be x plus 3 times x plus 2 cannot equal 0. That means that x plus 3 cannot equal 0 and x plus 2 cannot equal 0. Therefore, x cannot equal negative 3 and x cannot equal negative 2. So we have two restrictions on the denominator in D. We would say the domain is from negative infinity to negative 3. Make sure when you're listing this, you go from least um, to greatest with your restrictions, because if you say from negative infinity to negative 2, you're including negative 3 in there, and that would be wrong. So you would just want to make sure that you put these in order from least to greatest. Did that work out? It did. So that would be how we would represent the domain in this example. Next, we're going to actually go ahead and simplify each rational expression. In our first two examples, it looks like nothing's factored, so we're going to factor the numerator. The numerator has two terms, and they have a GCF of 3, so we're going to say 3 times y minus 4. And the denominator has a GCF, it looks like, of 2. However, when I factor out that GCF, I'm left with y squared minus 16, which is a difference of squares, so it can be further factored. Ooh, I'm glad that didn't do anything. So this is going to be 3 times y minus 4, we're going to leave the numerator alone over 2 and then y squared minus 16 factors into y minus 4 root minus root times root plus root. Now I see, so now everything's factored. There's two factors in the numerator, 3 is one of the factors, and y minus 4 is the other. The denominator has three factors, 2 is one of them, y minus 4 is one of them, and y plus 4 is one of them. Between the numerator and denominator, we do have one common factor, y minus 4. So we're going to factor that out, leaving us with 3 over 2 times y plus 4. You should talk to your teacher or professor about whether you're allowed to leave your answer like this. Sometimes they actually want you to distribute on the bottom and write it as 3 over 2y plus 8. Most don't, and I would say if they don't, then don't, because the more you do, the more likely it is that you're going to make a mistake, which is annoying. You would hate to have the right answer and then like mess up your distribution and get a wrong answer as a result of that. So check with your person who's in charge of your class and see what they say. In example B, looks like we have some factoring to do. Yikes, there's no GCFs anywhere. So we're going to focus on the numerator. For the numerator, if we're going to factor 8B squared minus 6B minus 9, our target product is negative 72. Our target sum, target product, negative 72, our target sum is negative 6. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 72 and add up to negative 6. That would be negative 12 and positive 6. So our winning combination, negative 12, positive 6. We're going to expand the middle. We're going to, we're going to replace this negative 6 with minus, uh, excuse me, this negative 6b with minus 12b plus 6b because we know that that adds up. So we're just expanding the middle to create four terms so that we can do factoring by grouping. Now I can group the first two terms. I can group the second two terms. 8b squared and 12b have a greatest common factor of 4b, leaving me with 2b minus 3. In the second grouping, 6 and 9 have a common factor of 3. Dividing that into both terms, we get 2b minus 3. These two terms now have a GCF of 2b minus 3. 
the, I'm going to pull out that GCF of 2b minus 3 and write the leftovers 4b plus 3. Okay, so I can rewrite this as 2b minus 3 times 4b plus 3. Now we want to do the same thing with the denominator. So in the denominator, we have 8b squared minus 18b plus 9. Here our target product is positive 72 and our target sum is negative 18. Two numbers that multiply to 72 and add up to negative 18 are negative 6 and negative 12. The order doesn't matter of those. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. So we're going to expand. We're going to replace minus 18b with minus 6b and minus 12b. Now we have to be careful here when we uh, go ahead and group these. Because of this negative, I'm going to change this to plus negative. And let's factor. So 8b squared and 6b have a GCF of 2b, leaving behind a 4b minus 3. I'm going to factor out that negative, that way the first term in our, my second grouping is positive, because that's usually what we want. And the GCF between 12 and 9 is 3. So we're going to factor out a negative 3, meaning I'm dividing negative 3 into both these two terms. That's going to leave me with 4b, since negative divided by negative is positive, minus 3. I see that I do indeed have a GCF between these two terms, that's good. And it's 4b minus 3. We're going to multiply it to the leftovers, 2b minus 3. Okay, so now we're ready to put this all back together. 4b minus 3 times 2b minus 3. Now I have two factors in the numerator and two factors in the denominator, one of which cancels, leaving behind a 4b plus 3 in the numerator and a 4b minus 3 in the denominator. And you might be saying, but look, they both have 4b. That's cool. But 4b is not a factor of either the numerator or denominator. 4b plus 3 over 4b minus 3 is the final end-all be-all answer. A few more examples. So the numerator here in letter C cannot be factored. Yay! So we get a break. Now what we can do with the denominator here, if you don't want to go through the process of target product, target sum, we can play the guessing game. Because all we care about in the denominator is whether 2t plus 3 is a factor or not. If it's not, then this, ex this expression cannot be factored. And if it is, or I'm sorry, it cannot be simplified. And if it is a factor, then it can be simplified. So we can play the guessing game where we say, okay, let's say that 2t plus 3 is a factor of the denominator. Then what would the other factor be? So this term here would be 2t times this needs to give me 2t squared, so that would be t. And this second term here, we know it's going to be a plus since there's all pluses down there. It's 3 times this needs to give me 6, so that would be 3 times 2. Now I know that if I was to distribute this, that the first terms are going to multiply to 2t squared and the last terms are going to multiply to 6. The question is, do the outer terms and inner terms added together give me that 7t in the middle? So that's what we need to check. So that 2t times 2 is 4t, 3 times t is 3t, and 4t plus 3t is 7t. Look, they match! Yay! So that means that this is the correct factoring of 2t squared plus 7t plus 6. Good news for us. So we have our single factor in the numerator. We're going to rewrite our denominator in factored form. It's 2t plus 3 times t plus 2. And then this and this simplify out, and we're left with 1 over t plus 2. In our next example, uh, the looks like the numerator has a GCF of 5, so we're going to factor out 5, leaving us with x plus 7. The denominator, x cubed plus 343, that's a sum of squares, so that's going to factor into, and some of, uh, I'm sorry, a sum of cubes. And this has a cubed root of x, and 343 has a cubed root of 7. So we just want to keep those roots in mind because that helps us with the factoring. So the first parenthesis, the first factor is x root plus root. And the second factor is the first root squared minus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. Now we want to see if we have a common factor between the numerator and denominator. We do, right here, leaving us with 5 over x squared minus 7x plus 49. Okay, so one thing that we haven't talked about yet is a useful technique uh, which is to factor out a negative 1. So we have these five expressions, and I know we just did a whole bunch of these, and these look a lot shorter, and they are, so yay for us. Um, but what does it look like? What does a negative 1 look like factoring it out? 
we know what a, a positive one looks like, and that's when we have like something over itself. This would factor two or simplify to positive one because we have the same factor in the numerator as the denominator. But what do opposite numbers look like? So what does five over negative five look like as just a generic rational expression? Well, five, let's just pretend that it's um, x minus y. Five is the difference of two numbers. Maybe it's seven minus two. Well, using those same two numbers, seven and two, how could we get a difference of negative five. That would be y minus x. And we can justify this because if we leave the numerator as x minus y, but then we rewrite the denominator, normally we like to have our x first, so x negative x plus y, and normally we don't like our first term to be negative. So then we could say x minus y over negative, let's factor out a negative, that would change the two signs, giving us a x minus y. Now we have a factor of x minus y in the numerator and denominator, but we have this negative, so that would be one over negative one, which is negative one. Now you don't have to go through this process the whole time, that was just my trying to explain why this hopefully makes sense, is that if we see x minus y over y minus x in, in whatever variation of variables, uh, combination of variables and numbers, uh, that will simplify to negative one. So in our first example, we have x minus three and three minus x. So again, you could, if you want to, while you're still trying to get this to make sense, rewrite the bottom to get x first. Then we say, no, 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 x should be positive. Let's factor out that negative. That would give me x minus three. Then the x minus threes cancel and we get negative one. In letter B, we see that five minus x over x minus five. These are gonna cancel, leaving us with a negative one somewhere. Now, if there's something else happening, you can just attach the negative to whatever other factors are left behind. If we look at letter C, we look really carefully. M plus two and two plus M, if we were to rewrite the denominator to have M first would be M plus two. That's the exact same as the numerator. That would equal just regular one. In letter D, I don't see it yet, but if we factor the numerator, that will give us three times g minus two over two minus g. Well, g minus two and two minus g, those are gonna be additive opposites, giving us negative three as our final simplified answer. And lastly, if we look at like an entire rational expression to kind of summarize everything we've done, and really it's up to you. If you don't like the fact that the numerator says 16 minus x squared, then you can preemptively factor out that negative and switch it so that it's x squared minus 16 instead. If you're okay with it, that's fine too. It's, it, you have to be comfortable with it and that's, that's what it comes down to. If we leave it as is, we would have four minus x and four plus x, because that's a difference of squares, root minus root times root plus root. The denominator, um, we have a target product of four and a target sum of negative five. So this would factor into x minus four times x minus one. Now I see here, this is my minus one right here. So again, now it's up to you how you wanna handle that negative. If you put it out in front, that's fine. You can drop all other parentheses. If you choose to put it in the numerator or denominator, you probably need to include parentheses. So you could write it like this, or if you just left it in the numerator since I wrote it up there, you would need to put the four plus x inside parentheses to indicate that that entire numerator should be negative. You can alternatively distribute it, giving you negative four minus x. And same with the denominator. If you choose to put the negative in the denominator, then that x minus one either needs to go in parentheses or you need to distribute it so that it says negative x plus one. It can be really tricky, so your safest bet is just throw that negative out in front and then you don't have to worry about anything I just said.